Yeah, I'm afraid we got a little bit ways to go. Yeah, unfortunately. It kills me that D1's playing on TV. I turn it off. <laughs> and we'll see how long that they play. Yeah, well, that's, that's true. That's very true. I, I don't, I'm not disappointed in the approach you're taking, believe me. It's just, it's a strange, strange year for sure. Oh, I unmuted you. Okay. Kissy, can you hear me? I can. Hey, how are you? Hey, hi, Donna. Hi, <laughs> have fun. You didn't say hi to Rocky. <laughs> Dave's my buddy in Florida, helps me recruit. It was 39 degrees today. <laughs> in Florida? Yeah, 39. Oh, my, oh my goodness. I, but to, wow. But tomorrow's going up to 75. Okay. Well, we had 59 yesterday, so I'm not going to complain. That was a heat wave. <laughs> See, Meg made it from work. Look tired, Megan. I'd say main, Megan Peach is a serious security guard, man. You know. <laughs> You don't try to go through that. You don't try to go through that front door messing with her. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I'm Dan. How you doing? Hey, Dan. Hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. How are you? Class of. Uh, I forgot now. Um, oh yeah, class of 1970. I was looking at the, the people who had registered. It looks like we have just about all the decades covered. Cool. I, although 80s, I didn't see any 80s on there. Nick, you got an 80s? Uh, I didn't see anybody on, from the 80s mm -hmm. on there. You're from the eight. No, you're from 92. Sorry, dumb Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I look up how long Kissy's been there, I feel from the, like I'm from the 80s. <laughs> Bobby, you've been around as long as me, right? That's why, that's why when I see what's yeah. this going to be, not to uh, preempt our show, what, 34 years this season? I'm, I'm starting 30, but I've, I took two years away, so 32. Right, okay. Okay, so I was, yeah. So you were an assistant. It was either your first or second year as an yes. assistant when I was there, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And Warren, so. Yeah. 10, 15, 20, we got 21 people. How many did we have register? It was around 20. Uh, I think it was closer to 30, oh. the last list I saw. I don't want to start too early, but you see, we have a couple of minutes still. I must be the furthest distance person. <laughs> uh yeah I, yeah Florida, well, i'm in sure. i'm in uh istanbul turkey <laughs> oh, holy no, mackerel uh, no no <laughs> i'm kidding i think we're gonna say no <laughs> you're right well i'm near albany new york hello Nick. The, the, the pictures in the background yeah. gave it away actually john john's in uh florida too down in naples no kidding Yes. Oh, so you're about two and a half hours from me. John is the guy that uh, he took the whole team uh, to dinner when we went to Naples last year. Nice. We had a great, great time. Naples is nice, real nice. I counted about 29 on the final count, Bobby. Okay. Unmute. You've got about 24 people, at least I, on my laptop, I have tw 24 screens. Yeah, it's hey. actually, I can see your thumbs up option may work, Frank, because I can see everyone now. Everyone's getting smaller, but I can see everyone. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Nick. Nick, yes. uh, Kenzie, Kenzie Worcester said she didn't realize she has to sign up. Can she still get on? Yes, she can. What does yeah. she need to do? Just uh, do you have her email, Kissy? It should be just Worcester K 
at, at huston.edu. We can either email or text her the link. Okay. Hello, 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 hello. Um, who's talk oh, Nicole, where are there you are, okay. Uh, I'll tell her you'll email her? Yep, oh, I'm doing it right now. Okay. Oh, she made it. She made it. Kenzie, you got on. Yes, John will be here soon. She's coming. Hey, Jones? Up. Yeah. Okay. Many okay, more well, people I'm join. Many more people <laughs> join. I'm going to have to put my glasses down. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's getting small. It looks like we have a couple more. So I'll wait just one more minute and then we'll go ahead and get started. That sounds good. Sydney on here? I see your mom. Um, Sid said that she was trying to get on, but she couldn't for some reason. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah. Nicole, would you mind resending her Sydney Allen an email? Sure. Is it just Allen S? I believe so. Look. If yes, it is. She can come over here and join ours too. <laughs> I'm just across the road from her. Who's this? Sydney apparently can't get him. Oh, here. The mother figured it out. No. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Hey, Sue. Thanks for joining us. Oh, there she is. There, Sydney, yep. All right, so we are gonna to try to stay on schedule. We have an hour, so we should um, be able to get through this by eight. I'm gonna, um, if, if you know anyone else, Kissy, go ahead and let me know. There's a message board. Uh, there's a chat function at the bottom. So if anyone wants to ask a question or Kissy, if you, if you know of someone trying to log on, go ahead and send me a message and I'll help with that. So thank you everyone for uh, being here. This is great. This is a great turnout for our women's basketball Zoom event. Um, I wanna let you know that we are recording this event. We're recording all of them. So if you would like to look back, you can see it or you can check out any of the other um, athletic or events that we have going on as well uh, that happened in the past. So I first uh, wanna welcome Bobby. Most of you know Bobby Campbell here. Um, he is going to help us moderate the conversation and, and uh, it'll be kind of an informal chat. For those of you that don't know Bobby, um, Bobby has been uh, with the university in, in multiple capacities with basketball. He's a 92 graduate uh, who played men's basketball. He had uh, more than a thousand career points with three trips to the NAIA ship and was inducted into the Husson Hall of Fame, Sports Hall of Fame in 2004. So thank you, Bobby, for being here and helping us moderate this. I'm gonna let you take it over. Thanks, thank you very much. And i um, very happy to be here in lieu of actually being able to watch the ladies play, which uh, I love to do and my family as well. It's great to get together and actually see the players and see Kissy and get together. And uh, thank you for all uh, the people who joined up tonight and registered. Appreciate you all being here and the players especially as well. We're, we're gonna look to ask you guys a lot of questions. Um, also thanks to Nick, Nicole, and then also Christina who couldn't join us tonight for asking me to moderate. Um, it's, it's, been really, uh, it's been really fun to do. I know we did the men's and it was a great time and we've even got more people here. So I looked at get a lot of good questions. Um, my, uh, Nicole mentioned my background with Hassan. I'll just give you a, a little bit of, a little bit more personal for some people who don't know me. 
as she said, I graduated from 92. Uh, actually, I met my wife who graduated in 1991 at Hudson. Um, I like to joke, we moved about five miles away. That's as far away as we left. Uh, my oldest daughter, who's currently working at Eastern Maine in the ICU, uh, graduated from Hudson in the, from the nursing program. And my youngest daughter, Lexi's in her P3 year at Hudson right now in the pharmacy program, as well as a bunch of other relatives and my brother and everybody. So Hudson's been a huge, huge part of my life, uh, not only around the athletic part of it, um, but just around friends and a lot of those other lasting things that go way beyond um, athletics. So I'd like to kick it off first tonight um, by introducing a couple of the uh, people that are joining us. First, I'm gonna start with uh, the coach, um, Kissy Walker. Thanks again, uh, Kissy, for agreeing to take part in this and your players as well. And maybe if you could just give some of the folks here, I know like myself, a lot of them know you, but maybe just uh, give a little, a little bit of quick recap about yourself and then maybe a little bit about your staff too. Who's gonna be joining you this year um, if we get to that point on the bench? Sure, um, things don't change too much for us. I'm gonna start the 30th year this year and our staff involves Randy Dodge, who's been with me for probably 27 years. And then we have Lori Gott, who my best friend, who I played with at the University of Maine. Uh, we have Steve Wasikin, who lives up in Millinocket, about an hour and 15 minutes away, uh, just really enjoys basketball and travels every day to work with us. And uh, last year, we had one of our former players, Kenzie Worcester helping us out, but she's in her sixth year of the PT program and doing clinical work up north. And so her best friend, Joan Overman, who was a great player for us and defensive player of the year, uh, is joining us to give us some help on staff volunteering this year. Those two are under Kenzie's name here. Um, so that's our staff. We've all been around for a while and really just love what we do. That's great. And we've got a lot of questions in store for you from the uh, folks who registered. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Huston Athletic Director Frank Pergolese. Frank, thank you again for joining us. And maybe you could just give the folks just a, a quick little bit of information about yourself. Um, uh, thank you, Bobby. Happy to be here. And thank you for helping us out. Uh, I uh, just started my uh, seventh year at Huston. And it's been a great experience. Awesome players, particularly on this team, and, and uh, just excited to, to work as hard as we can to get to a point where we can get back on the court and play basketball. That sounds great. Thanks, Frank. And so we're joined also by, we have five players, current players on, I think, Kissy? I believe that's how many we have, yeah. So uh, what I'll ask each of you to do is, and we'll start with Sydney, just because I, I know her the best, and I'll pick on her first. Um, just where you, where you played, your hometown, where you're from. Uh, also, I'm an, always interested in what your major is, if you could just give us that as well. Um, and then maybe just one quick interesting fact about yourself that a common fan wouldn't really know. You know, probably coach would know it, but not a common fan. So um, you other four ladies can have time to think about that. Sydney, we'll put you right on the spot first. Why don't you start? Okay, uh, thanks, Bobby. Um, so I'm from... <laughs> I'm from uh, Corinth, so I went. To, I played sports at Central High School. Um, I was actually homeschooled in high school, so went right to college from being homeschooled. And I'm in my third year in the nursing program. Um, a fun fact is, well, Coach always like to tell this one is that I'm the oldest of nine, so pretty big family. And my mother's on here too, somewhere. <laughs> so who also played for Coach Walker, which I always think is kind of neat. Yes, yeah. Who's, who, I'll take volunteers from this point out. <laughs> Emma. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm from Millinocket. Uh, I played sports at Stearns High School. Um, I'm a senior in the elementary education program. Um, and a fun fact, which probably a lot of people know, but both of my parents played basketball at Hassan. Excellent. And they're old like me, because I remember them. And her sister plays for us too. She's a freshman. Vanessa's going, coach had to add that. 
Go ahead, Vanessa, why don't you go next then? Um, okay, so I'm uh, from Hawthorne, New York. I played for Kennedy Catholic. Um, I'm a junior and I just recently switched my major to um, a master's in criminal justice administration. Um, and there's a lot more like degrees I'm going for, but I just gonna say that. And um, coach loves to tell people that I don't know how to drive. I do have my permit and I'm gonna get my driver's license soon, but uh, yeah. That's interesting. And you don't have a bike. <laughs> I do not know how to ride a bike either because I might fall off them. They're scary, coach. Okay. Uh, Amanda. Uh, hello. I'm from Southern New Hampshire. I went to Merrimack High. I'm a senior in the criminal justice program. And a fun fact is I'm the only lefty on the team. And Megan, why don't you finish it up? I think Cass is on, so I won't be finishing it. She'll be next. But, um, yeah, so I went to Dexter. I was born in Garland, but it's way too small to have its own school, so I went to Dexter. And my major is psych. I'm a senior in the psych program. Um, I'm finishing my last prereq to, like, apply to nursing school, so when I'm out, I want to pair the psych and the nursing sometime. And a fun fact, my go-to fun fact is um, that Tom Brady is, like, a huge part of my life, which sounds stupid, but he's like 60% of what I love on this planet is Tom Brady. I'm not ready to talk <laughs> about on currently, so just, but know that. Those interceptions lately must be killing I'm not talking about it. I'm not <laughs> talking about it. I'm and gonna and go did you say another, did you say we had a sixth teammate on? Yeah, Cassie. Where'd she go? I'm not here. You're right there. I'm Cassie. I'm from Enfield, Connecticut. I went to Enfield High School. I'm a junior in the forensic science program. And a fun fact is I taught myself how to play piano. What do you prefer to play? What type of music? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> but what's your go-to song if you want to show someone you really know how to play? I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess we're going to have to some, at some point see you play to really believe it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to get first, first I'm going to do, if you have any questions, just kind of hold them. We had a, a great number of questions from all the folks that registered. So I'll kind of get through, through those first um, and also give you time to come up with some other ones. If I don't read your question exactly how it was submitted, it's just because I it bled into someone else's and it was similar and just asked in a little different way. So we'll get through, through those first, and if that sounds good, we'll get going from there. So um, the first one I've got to ask, because I've thought about it too, the first one's for you, Coach Walker. Um, do you think that you will be still coaching there until you coach a granddaughter of one of your players? <laughs> oh, that would, uh, <laughs> that'd be tough, I think, to go that long. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, pretty pretty thrilled right now that I have some of the moms of the daughters playing right now. Sue Allen is on here, and Sue and I work out together now, and of course Sydney plays, and uh, Emma and Catherine's mom played for me on the team that went to the NAI Final Four. Um, and we've had a couple other players, and that's pretty special to me. So if I ever get a granddaughter, I hope I get a big raise for lasting that long. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, make, we'll do everything we can to make that happen. But I had to get that one question out of the way. Um, so just to recap the end of last season for everyone on, and, and I'm sure the players know. So you had a, a great run down the stretch. You won five, uh, 15, excuse me, 15 of 16 games down the stretch, inclu including a run of 10 wins in a row, capping it off with the NAC championship um, yet again. And, and I know I've known you a long time, and I know your goal every year is to, that's the goal, to win the NAC championship. So in this kind of a year, um, and I know everything is, is day to day, and it's, it's, it's real changing all the time. Uh, what's what's kind of like your personal goal? Maybe. Maybe, uh, maybe for yourself and then maybe as for the team or something you've talked to the team about, some kind of setting of a goal. Well, I go back and forth in my head as to what the expectation should be. And, you know, if we had a, have a season where we have 
an NCAA tournament, our goal doesn't change. We still want to win the NAC and go to that NCAA tournament. Um, but I'd be thrilled this year if we got in eight to 10 games and we got our freshmen an opportunity to get some playing time, get to learn our system a little more. And for people like Amanda and uh, Emma and Meg, I know Meg talks about coming back, but we would love to get some games for their senior year. Yeah, as, as we would all like to watch them play. You, you led into a couple more questions that folks asked. Um, the first one, you've got three seniors on the team you just mentioned, Meg and Emma and Amanda. Uh, what's, and I'll ask each of them maybe their thoughts. Uh, and just to give context to everybody, the NCAA has said that if you play, it's 12 games or fewer, correct, Frank? I, I actually think it's 14, but. Four, 14 now, yeah. okay. Um, you actually retain your year eligibility. So any seniors who play 14 games or less can come back for another year. And well, I'll start with you maybe, Megan. What's your, and that's, it may be too early for a firm decision for any of the three, but just maybe your thoughts on that you could share with us here. Well, I definitely like that they're giving us that option. Um, this is obviously a sucky way to have to end it. If it, you did have to end it this way, I feel really bad for the high school, the girls in high school right now um, that are just gonna really lose all that experience. Um, I definitely like the idea of coming back, um, getting an extra year would just in general be fun. Like everybody's always afraid of the end of this whole thing. And so the extension is kind of cool. Um, it's going to depend on a few things as far as like classes go. I'd have to extend out the classes that I have now um, to try to make me have enough to get through another year. Um, but there's a cool little thing that I could potentially get to do is um, Peyton Grant is like considering Husson and she's one of my best friends and I would absolutely love to play with her. And we never thought I'd get to because of the age gap. And I always joked about like taking a year off and then going wherever she went to play with her. And um, it'd be really cool if that ended up happening. So uh, it's opened up a few little weird doors, but I'm not hundred percent sure yet, just cause there's other future things to consider more than basketball, but I, there's good and there's good and bad with it. Yeah, thanks for sharing. And that's what I was going to mention. It's, it's good you can see you know, some positives in it, for sure. Any positives we can take out of everything that's going on is, is certainly great. Emma, what about you? Um, I agree with Meg, but like for me, I can't see myself like having enough classes or going for something extra um, that could like go with teaching. And also like next semester, I'm going to be doing student teaching. So like after I do that, I'm going to be ready to start a job so yeah no totally I totally get that yeah, thank you and, and Amanda um I'm in a five-year program at Hassan so there's a high chance I will probably come back because the classes situation fits out it's just trying to figure out an internship along with all the travel that comes with basketball and the like commitment to class and if I get a job and the internship and then practice is a lot to divide my time with so there's a chance I'll probably come back but also have to like recognize that I have to end my career eventually and like start doing an adult things just like Megan said so there's a yeah, I'm yeah. kind of 50 50 right now yeah no and we all understand that certainly and uh, we, I thank you all three for sharing uh Kissy you also mentioned there some freshmen incoming freshmen I know you had four could you just give us a little blurb maybe on each of those young ladies yeah sure um as I mentioned we have Emma's sister sister Catherine Alley who's a a guard. We have uh, Trinity Montigny, who's out of Ellsworth, Maine. Um, we have a post player, Lucy Rothwell, Rothwell um, out of Telstar. Uh, her team was not very successful, but Lucy's about a 5'11 post, kind of started playing a little later, but a real hard worker, um, learning, going to be a, a culture change for her this year, but we're expecting some good things from her. And um, our, our fourth one is McKaylin Porter, who's from Southern Aroostook. She's won a couple state championships. She's a 5'11", kind of a guard, can play a little bit in the post as a, if you went by numbers, a number four. Um, but they're all people that can step in and play and, and give us minutes. And they're just, uh, you know, a few of them played uh, for me in AAU. And so they're a little familiar with the offense that we've run, which makes the transition a little bit easier. And um, Catherine actually ran the same offense somewhat in high school. So they were all familiar with some of the things that we do. They're all 1,000 point scores. 
Great. Well, that's, yeah, it's certainly great, great uh, ladies to add to your program for sure. What, um, a lot of questions also came in from the folks who registered, a lot of them are who are on here right now about, uh, you know, focus and motivation and just in these kind of times, if, you know, I'd, I'd ask you maybe to think about that, but also can you kind of take us back to what your steps were when you were practicing? I know some, some people had some interest in that, like, did you start right out five days a week or what, what that kind of looked like to get everybody going on day one? Sure, I'll, I'll say a few things, but I think the girls can tell you about what they're doing, uh, especially right now to stay motivated and connected. But um, we started in the middle of September and the girls just trained twice a week, strength training, and it was all done outside uh, conditioning and strength training, mostly all body work. And then October 1st, we were allowed to get in the gym. Our first 14 days uh, were just skills because we couldn't play any defense on each other. And that actually wasn't um, as bad as I thought it was gonna be because I feel like I stress fundamentals in the beginning anyway. So we really just honed in on working on fundamentals. And then um, once October 15th hit, we were able to play some defense. And I think we got maybe two weeks in where we could play against one another and then that, then things kind of stopped. And what do your plans look like? And then I believe you, I've got all kinds of questions for the, for the ladies here. So you won't be the only one having to answer. I'm not picking on you. Uh, what's, your what's your plans? Uh, so you won't be back until January 4th? Right, we got the go ahead from Frank today that we can come back on the 4th. Okay, so what's that? What are you doing in that interim? What's that all gonna look like? So the girls are home right now. And uh, can I throw it at them to fill everybody in Certainly. on what they're doing? Okay, how Certainly. about Vanessa? Want to want to give them a little bit of a rundown? And um, so we decided that we should work out like mostly as a group, or we should work out in smaller groups just so that we still keep contact with each other. And it's kind of like holding each other accountable. We know that we're working out. We know that we're doing it. So Monday, Wednesdays, we're trying to get a run in. And then Tuesday, we're doing a whole, well, lot, yesterday, actually, we did a whole team Zoom workout. And it was really good because we hadn't seen each other and stuff. So we worked out together on Zoom. And then tomorrow, we're going to work out in our small groups. And it's just um, the workout that Lori sends us. So they're mostly body weight stuff like push-ups, burpees, stuff like that. So um, that's what we're doing right now. You mentioned accountability. And any time anyone's left to do things on their own, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's different from all being in the gym under the roof with the coach watching you. Uh, I'd probably throw this question to you, Emma. Um, <laughs> you see, you have to stay paying attention. Uh, you know, as a, as a senior, and I, and I at least uh, outside looking in, I see you as one of the leaders on the team. And it, as a senior, do you feel any more responsibility than you would in a regular season with what's kind of going on or you know how, how have you tackled that yourself oops sorry <laughs> um i do feel more um like responsibility um but it has been really hard because we just don't know like what's gonna happen um but yeah i guess <laughs> what, what about like the, with the freshmen with four freshmen including you know obviously your, your sister as well you know have you done anything extra your, yourself as a senior to kind of bring any of them under your wing or, or help them out at all? Do you feel any difference there? Um, I have kind of, me and my sister have kind of like had a pretty good relationship. Um, we've done some like team bonding things, but yeah. yeah. Um, Amanda or Megan, to each of you, uh, the other seniors on the team, any thoughts on, on your position as a senior leader in these times? I think, oh, Meg, you wanna go first? No, no, go, go. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I think it's harder to do things as we try and follow social distancing and masks and all that other stuff. But I think team bonding hasn't really been affected because like I feel just as close with the freshmen as I did all the other three years I've played at Hudson. So it, that's kind of nice that the bonding has come so natural with all of us and like being friendly and helping each other out in classes and stuff. It's just, I don't really feel a difference as a senior because like everybody has this, their own role and it kind of just like comes together naturally, I think. So, I nice. think that's yeah. really it. It's been good with this group of girls too, because there's nobody that's hard to get along with. Like they, 
everybody they're they're sweethearts all of the all four of them and um they made it really easy to just kind of integrate they fit really well and so that part I agree with Amanda on it obviously has been tough just because like we can't like the the day that coach texted us and said that we couldn't practice was the day we were going like all of us were going bowling so like any of that team bonding stuff you usually do like in person we can't really do as much of we did a couple things at the very beginning before things got kind of crazy um but I think this group is really good as far as we've had zero trouble with any of them they're all wicked sweethearts so good it's nice to hear that you guys are still staying connected and do you think because it's you know 2020 and not 1980s when I was there and I'll give you this question Sydney do you think the having the technology and everything like that is is making it a lot easier where you guys are so used to FaceTiming and texting and stuff what's what's your thought on that Sid? Um, I feel like it's definitely easier to like stay connected like Vanessa said like we had a group like FaceTime last night as we all worked out and it was kind of just nice to like kind of like just like catch up with all the girls like we asked about like how our Thanksgivings were and stuff and so you know back in those days we might not have been able to do that as we can now. That's great. Uh, I had a question Frank for, for yourself. I know we, when we talked a couple of weeks ago um, there were some key dates coming up that I'm sure folks that are hoping to see the ladies play at some point this year might be interested in. Can you share uh, some of those dates with us and some timelines that you, you have as of today? Uh, sure. Um, there was a key date in December, and I can't remember exactly whether that the last uh, Zoom was before or after that. Uh, but that date uh, was supposed to be when the presidents of the NAC uh, would make a decision about uh, what we're going to do with basketball. Um, the ADs recommended to the presidents that we actually um, uh, make a decision in, in uh, December, and they in turn decided to make a decision in January, um, which is a, a little bit further down the road than we were anticipating or, or needed. So right now, I, I, it's the week of January 11th where the presidents are, are scheduled to, to decide on is there going to be conference basketball um, or there's a, you know, there's three or four other models, um, you know, that, that could come to play. But the, once we get, once the presidents make a decision, if they were to make a decision that um, there wouldn't be, a, there wouldn't be conference play this year, then the indiv individual institutions would have the ability to, to plot whatever course that they wanted to and, and go with their own. Is that something that... So January 11th that, is, is really our next key date. So if, if, the, if the NAC doesn't end up being the NAC this year, if you will, does, is the plan to try to, you know, what, what, what would that look like? You'd reach out to other ADs and see who's interested in playing or what, what's kind of the plan for, for Husson, I guess, uh, as, you know, where it sounds like you have autonomy on, on kind of if you want to play or not. Yeah, and actually a lot of that discussion has already taken place and is continuing to take place. Um, but I would expect that we would play um, a reduced schedule somewhere in the vicinity of maybe uh, 10 to 12 games. And it would be uh, primarily, if not totally, against other main schools. Okay. Yep. Sounds good to know. I know we had a question come in from one of the viewers here. Um, if Division One is playing games in a bubble, what precautions are being taken to keep the girls safe? Um, if if they do end up traveling to other schools, it, it may be a tough one to answer now. I'll, I'll kind of throw it out there for your thoughts. So I guess Kissy or Frank or yeah, I'm probably the best person to answer that at this point. Um, uh, there's there's a lot of things, and there, and there there will still there will continue to be more things. Um, and and uh, I thank I extend thanks to Janine Gemitter because she's really been the the person that. Uh, has uh, really absorbed all of the the documents and the guidelines and the, the recommendations and the requirements that come from the NCAA. And I, I, I tell you, the um, the pile of of manuals and documents that that has come out since really since last summer is probably half as tall as I am. But um, so 
So I'm going to give you things that are in no, not in any uh, order. Um, uh, there's a whole, well, number one, there, would, there, there almost certainly would not be any spectators. Um, and uh, the, the gym will be set up in a way so that there's more separate, more room uh, for the players to separate. Um, they would not uh, wear masks to compete to bother on the floor, but they would be wearing masks during the game while they were on the bench. Um, we probably will um, uh, just just from a general sense, and Kissy and I actually had some of this conversation th this afternoon. Um, so both teams come back on on uh, January fourth. Uh, we're really going to need to 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 have a, a, a really clear and distinct separation uh, be between the two teams. Um, so when the men's are in, men's are practicing, they're the only group that can be in the gym. And then they need to leave the gym. And then the, when the women are practicing, they would be the only group that's in the gym. Um, because we, we would want to, in the event we had um, uh, an, an infection at any point in time, we'd want to be able to identify where it came from um, so that we could um, try to work on it. Things like travel, whereas we as and normally for our in-state games, we've put both teams on one bus and we would not do that. Uh, this year, um, we would we would have separate buses so that um, you know a, a capacity of a coach bus is 56 passengers. Um, so I think the women's team probably is about 20 people total. So we would really be able to to create I think think some good uh, social distancing that would uh, you know help us increase our 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 safety. Um, be one of the schools in, in one of the minutes of a meeting, somebody, and I don't know who, I, can, I don't know who it was, I must, have, I must have not been there at that particular moment, but somebody made a, a suggestion or a comment that they were gonna have their women's team stay on the bus while the men's game was going on. And then when the men's game was over, the women would come in and play and the men would go out and sit on the bus and I think, Kissy will confirm that I said there's no way in heck we're we're doing that. We're not putting our kids on, expecting them to sit on buses for for two hours. Um, Whether it has Wi-Fi or not. Yeah, Wi-Fi or not. Uh, but because we would we would we're, uh, I think our preference and um, it's a conference decision, then it would have to be voted on. But our preference would be that. Um, if the men are home, the women are on the road, or if the women are home, the men are on the road against the same opponents so that you uh, you create a little bit more separation. Yeah. Um, lots of other things, uh, I, I don't have that document with me, so I can't, but it's it's definitely an ongoing process. I, actually, one thing that, that I think is very critical is testing. Uh, so during the fall, uh, we, we tested all of our teams uh, once a week uh, for, if going into January, uh, the, the basketball players will be tested three times a week, uh, which gives us it, it reduces uh, the risk the risk on one end uh, that would would be hopefully no more than balanced out by um, the other part of it is that it you're te the reason you're testing three times a week is to allow uh, the teams to practice and not have to wear masks while they're practicing, uh, which is, I think, a good decision. So, so you, you know, we would probably be testing uh, all of the basketball players Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, or whatever the days are, um, which would enable us to continue to monitor their health and well-being as best we, best we can. So I think that's, that's a really important ingredient to this whole thing. Yeah, thanks for that information. That's, that's really good to hear a lot of that stuff. And as a fan, as there's other fans on here too. So if it comes to the point where you're having those home games, what about streaming as far as getting, getting those on? Uh, what you guys, have you talked about that? Well, I mean, we, we, uh, we currently stream, stream everything. So we yep. certainly wouldn't stop that. We would at the very yep. least do that. Um, I think um, we would, uh, We'd be able to, we're planning on having some conversations with Nescom uh, 
um, about their ability to come in and instead of when we stream, it's a one camera shoot. Um, you know, Nescon, Nescon can come in and, and put four or five cameras in the gymnasium. But when you put four or five cameras in, uh, the, all those people have to be counted for in, in the 50 limitation. Um, just like all the players need to be counted. So, you know, the, the state currently has a limit in place of 50 people in an indoor facility. So that 50 people would include the players, the referees, the coaches, the, the person keeping the clock and um, being the public address oh. announcer. So there, there is not going to be a whole lot of room left for uh, additional people to, to uh, you know, do a three camera shoot for a, a, a streaming production. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's, that's good to hear as a fan that we'll, we'll, we'll have our streaming to at yeah. least watch. We'll, we'll do the best we can, but yep. it certainly will be, every, if it, whether you consider what we've done in the past good or not, it, it'll be equal to or better than that. Uh, don't do the taped crowd noise, though, please. <laughs> Good suggestion, Eric. Yeah, yeah, I like that as well. Um, that that pretty much wraps up a lot of the questions that the uh, the folks who registered had. Uh, you know, I've I've got some more. Um, if, but if anybody has any questions, please, you know, just take, come off mute and ask a question. Uh, open it up to some other people here. Somebody's got to have a question out there. Is he, are, are there any significant rule changes in, in D3 this year that, that will just, as a fan, you need to be aware of that, that, have, come, that have come into play this year? I um, can't think of any off the top of my head. A lot of things are just, you know, points of emphasis, like in the post play and the whole hand tagging still. Okay. Um, but off the top of my head, I can't recall. Okay. Is he so, right? The three-point line. The oh, three yes. Line was supposed to change, and then they got pushed back another year. Yeah, and we had our floor redone over the summer, so they, they put the correct lines down, and we're all good to go. Good. Okay. I have a question <laughs> that uh, I, I live in Florida. Kissy and I have worked together trying to get some recruits uh, from Florida to, you know, go up to Maine, especially due to the fact that there are no D3s in the entire state. So this is probably more directed to the players than Kissy, because we've gone over this a million times. But if you were a player, and you are players, and there was a recruit coming from Florida, and you can understand, I'm sure, what some of the difficulties might be for them, how would you, or what would you say to a potential Florida recruit to convince them to come to Husson. Now, academics aside, okay, because if they're looking at Husson, chances are you have, they have the academic choice. I'm talking about the, obviously, the obvious question with them is weather and distance. So as a player, let's say you're hosting them for the weekend. What would you say to them to help convince them to go to Husson? Um, I'll go. Um, so I am from New York and it's seven hours away, obviously not as far as Florida. Um, but I guess if I were hosting someone from Florida for the weekend, I'd probably say that it's, it's definitely a culture shock to come up to Maine from Florida. Um, so I'd probably say that it's, it's good to get a change of culture and it's good to um, discover different cultures, I guess. So, I mean, Hudson's a great school, obviously, and it's, it's obviously going to be cold up in Maine, but I think it's good to discover and adventure new places. Um, it would be good for them to be on their own. Obviously, they're going to have a lot more independence since they're literally so far away. Um, so I guess I would say it's just good to try new places, see how they like it. And then if they wanted to come to Hudson, I'd tell them like about the program, obviously, and that we've won five NAC champions in a row and all that stuff. But I definitely just say like a change of culture. It's something that you should probably um, experience at least like for college, you know. Yeah. Let me ask you this question, the reverse. If you were in Maine, would you have ever considered coming to Florida if the reverse situation occurred? <laughs> ask one of the Maine ladies. Yes, because Florida kids always say, I'm not going up there because, and the first one is always oh. the one. 
The second one is the distance, but we've tried to explain to them now with Allegiant Airlines, they could be there in three hours. So really that doesn't, you know, hold much water. But if you were a Maine student, like, would you be willing to come to Florida as you're asking a Floridian to come to Maine? Emma, you're the furthest north. What do you think about that? Emma's a homebody, though. <laughs> yeah. I know, I, I know. I mean, I might if I really liked it, I guess, but I, like, family's really big to me, and I, my freshman year, I went home, like, every weekend, so that would probably be really hard for me. Gotcha. And Dave, Thank you me. have to remember, I bring them to Florida most Christmases. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I didn't have anything to do this Christmas because you didn't show up. I, you know, but the way this state is, you don't want to come here now anyway. It's really bad. You know, Kissy, Dave brings up a good uh, line of questioning around recruiting. So I, I've got two thought, two questions first. Uh, how's your, what's your roster? I, I know that the whole uh, extra year eligibility and things are going to really impact some schools across all divisions. What's your roster looking like right now with the addition of the four freshmen? I'll let you answer that and I've got a follow up. We're, we're looking to bring in about five players. I know there are some schools that their rosters are already full uh, because of the kids that are going to come back for that extra year. But um, I've been particular on who I've wanted to bring in. And so we've left some spots open. So we've got about five we're looking to fill. So you just gave me another question. So uh, when you do recruit, I mean, are you looking for uh, a, a position player or someone for your system? What, what, what's kind of the first thing to check the box for you when you're, when you're looking for someone? Well, I think you're always looking for talent. And um, we're at that point with five net championships that we don't want just a player to fill the roster. We want to bring in a player that's an impact player. But in saying that, we really look for somebody who's going to be a good fit. And I think the girls hopefully will back me up and, and, and tell you that, um, you know, we, we look to bring in people that can get along with them and they're going to fit with them. Um, and, you know, I've had teams in the past that we've had more talent and we didn't win championships, um, but we've had some really good team chemistry over the years. And I think another important piece is they have to peak at the right time. And we have found a way the last few years anyway to be peaking when it counts. Yeah. And, and then my last question around that is in these times, how much and to what extent, and, and if you can even give examples of how the pandemic has affected your recruiting this year. Mm -hmm. um, I've spent a lot, I spent most of the time recruiting during that, uh, I say COVID because we're still in COVID, but back in March, April, May, uh, doing a lot of Zooms and actually doing a lot of research on recruiting and um, trying to, you know, it's, it's all new. You know, there's a lot of social media and you've got to learn how to do the social media because recruits are following, you know, Instagram and Snapchats and um, it's, it's, recruiting is, uh, it's huge. It's, you got to have the players and you know they're not picking up the phone anymore it's texting and social media and so you've got to have a mixture of sending emails social media texting and and the texting is constant um so it's it's one of the biggest challenges i think as a coach and where times are changing you got to try to keep up with it and i think you got to do that by you know, talking to other coaches and reading materials and figuring out what's the best way to go about it. Yeah, you certainly Can have to. The yeah, no, that, that's okay. perfect, actually. I mean, it just shows that you have to be flexible. And it's really a tribute to your, you and Coach Caruso and your staffs that, you, you know, even though you've been there, we won't even say the years, a long time, you know, you guys have been able to stay adaptable to these changes and, and no more than this year, you had to be, you know, adaptable as ever, certainly in the way you, you know, the way you coach, the way you practice and other things like that. Uh, any other questions out there? If I could add something to that in the recruiting sure. part, especially I do a lot of evaluations of players in Florida, obviously, and a lot of the events have been shut down for obvious reasons. Uh, some of the events, there's only so many people that could get in. And so a lot of people who want to get in do not. So it works both ways. It's not only difficult for the coaches to evaluate players, 
but now it's becoming more and more difficult for the players to figure out where they want to go because they can't visit or it's very difficult to visit. And, you know, a lot of it now is, you know, Zooms like Kissy had mentioned, uh, maybe doing some investigation on the program itself, but it's, it's a two way street and to land a player uh, of quality, both academically and athletically, I think becomes more and more difficult because you can't show them the campus or if they get on campus, there aren't any students there. So they're not getting a true picture of the college. So I think the difficulty in recruiting is on both sides. And Bobby, we, we send a lot of video, you know, the school has put together uh, a lot of different videos. I went around campus taking some pictures and videos. Um, but, you know, it's probably tough for a kid to make a decision if they don't step foot on that campus. Uh, a, a lot of kids, I think, at the Division One and Division Two level, from my last research of reading, 86% are making decisions without even stepping on campus. So I don't think that, that those numbers are probably quite the same for Division Three. Um, but a lot of video right now. Yeah, yeah Dave, um, I just wanted to build off of your first question that you had mm -hmm. um, in terms of, like, getting recruits up to Maine. I think it would be surprising how fast Hassan feels like home for some people. Like when I got on campus, I didn't go home until Thanksgiving break or even really fall break my freshman year. So like, but I enjoyed the food that they had and the people that I was around mm -hmm. and the events off campus and how easily I was like welcomed and like my professors and how helpful they were when I didn't understand something and like going to the gym and like the people around me like made Hassan feel like home faster than I thought it would. So I think that's another thing you can add to the recruits is that like, yes, it's a plane flight away, but it so quickly feels like home to like majority people who go. I'll remember that the next time I talk to somebody. <laughs> yeah, thanks for sharing that, Amanda. I'd like to bring Kenzie and Joan into this. Uh, you know, it's just been a while since I was there and I was just trying, the other night I was just trying to think, you know, how would I have felt going through this as a player as, as two ladies that just, ended up playing a year or two years ago. What, what are either of your thoughts on, you know, how you would have felt, how you think the players are feeling? I, I'd be interested in what you guys might think of all this. Oh, what, am I going? <laughs> um, I think it was a perfect time to get done, actually. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I've been involved a little bit this year and I'm glad I have been. Uh, I think it would be really tough. I've, I've tried to put myself in their shoes being a player and I, I still can't imagine what it would be like. Um, Kendall, what do you think? Um, I definitely would struggle if I was a senior for sure, or actually really any year. Um, and if I had the opportunity to come back, I for sure 100% would somehow make it happen. Um, and I would just, when you guys were talking about bonding and not being able to like be together and do the normal things that you could, I also think like this is a really good bonding experience to like to go through such a tough, hard mental aspect of it. Like you guys are keeping each other um, probably happier than you would think you guys are um, without the uh, typical gatherings that you guys have. Just being able to, I don't know, um, be each other's support system, I guess. And so I wouldn't stress too much about not being able to do the typical things you can, just being able to be there for each other in such a stressful time, both through basketball and school and life in general. Yeah, I thank, thanks for sharing that, both of you. And I think that's a really good point Kenzie makes right there, um, especially for all the players that, that are on this Zoom with us. You know, I, I played a long time ago, Kissy did, others on the phone, uh, other sports. It's, it's really, you know, at the end of the day, you, you kind of forget about the practices and the games and, you remember the relationships, right? And you've still got those. Uh, whether you're playing games or not, you're still, you know, you've got each other. And I think it's certainly important to remember that. Um, and it also brings to my mind, like, focus, right? I mean, when I hear, you know, you guys are practice and stuff, I mean, you're not even sure whether you're going to play a game, right? And you're still out there busting your butts and practice every day and working hard. And Cassie, you know, what, what how do you keep focus i mean you're in for, uh, forensics I think, did you say 
correct. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you got that, you got that to deal with, and then you're trying to work hard and practice, not knowing if you're going to even play a game this year or next. Like, just give us your thoughts on that. I'd, I'd be curious. Like we've talked about earlier, can you mute that, please? Um, having your teammates around you helps a lot. We can keep each other focused. Uh, we can pick each other up if one person is having an off day or struggling a little bit. So it's a lot easier with 10 or 11 other people around you every day. Yeah, that's great to hear. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, other questions out there, anyone? Feel free to even type it in or, or just Bobby, speak Dan up. has a question. Yep. <clears throat> Go ahead, Dan. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, I played baseball for Hudson and uh, to your teammates that are there, um, as I mentioned and I spoke when I was up visiting with Nick, <clears throat> you guys are going to be teammates. There's no taking that away from you guys now. And the way you play, the way you work will define you as you go through life. This is a bump in the road, how you handle yourself now, taking on extra work, doing things will enable you to do anything you want to do down the road because you navigated through this by yourself <clears throat> and with teammates. So I, I, I think that, that is one of the best things that, that, you know, a positive that comes out of here, working together, playing together, and, and lifting each other up as needed. Uh, but I want to ask you a question, Coach. Um, when you play your games, are you, and I haven't seen any games, my apologies to that, but do you play an up-tempo game? Do you, do you go into the post? Do you do your shots off of that? And do you play uh, defense with uh, person to person or do you play zones or you, do you change around based upon the talent that you have at the school? Yeah, I think we, we change based on what we have for talent. Back in the 90s, um, we went to the final four, a fabulous four for the NAI. We were small and quick, didn't start anybody over 5'9". And then we had a taller team and had to go to a half court game. Um, my preference is I'd love to run and press for 40 minutes, but we can't always do that. Um, we run an offense uh, that's called the Read and React. Um, it's something we've been running for a while. And defensively, we've been running something called the Pack Line Defense. Of course, we put a little, you know, bit of our own touches on, on both. Mm -hmm. um, I love junk defenses. So every once in a while, if I think, you know, we can run a 1-3-1 to try to beat somebody, I'll throw that in. Um, but that's the parts of the game I love is trying to figure out, you know, what you should run to try to beat a team. So. Thank you. Welcome. Other questions? We still got a few minutes. I have a question for Coach. I guess so. <laughs> Allen here, even though it says John Allen, not my husband's computer. Um, I played for Coach in the, I'll say, early 90s. Um, and I know she's coached for a long time. So I'm just curious, like, what's the difference coaching girls in the 90s versus coaching girls today? Oh, great question. It is a great question. Um, and John, you probably can talk to that too. <laughs> you know, Sue, I don't know if there's a difference between the girls. I, I think the difference is probably just in all the other aspects of life of, of how things have changed really um you know just the whole thing of back in your day you guys would go out and pick up a ball and play on a playground and everything today is very much um you know planned out for kids and you know just the whole thing with having cell phones you know we take phones away at halftime Never in my lifetime did I ever think that that would be something we would be doing, um, but it, it's more for focus purposes. So, you know, we've had to implement some different rules and things that we never had to do. Um, and then, you know, the whole recruiting part of it is all changed, but in, in terms of the players themselves, I don't know that that's changed a whole lot. We didn't have phones, by the way. At least I didn't have one. No, Sue's team, Sue's team went to practice <laughs> in high school on their snowmobiles. Oh, yeah. Right? That's right. <laughs> what else would you do? I mean. Of course, Thanks. Megan probably Thank would you. do that if she could. <laughs> yes, she would. <laughs>
I think that the social media part that Kissy mentioned uh, might have a greater effect on high school players and college. The college players tend to understand what their responsibilities are uh, to the team, to academics and so forth. Obviously they're more mature age-wise and so forth. High school kids are so caught up into that scene that things that show up on, you know, these recruiting services, I mean, every kid's an All-American on Huddle. And uh, they're also very social conscious. They're getting their license. Now all of a sudden they all have cell phones. So I think on the high school level, the types, the, the problems you run into uh, because of the social media are, are more noticeable than you might have it, you know, on a college level. Good point. Any other questions? Well, just one closing thought for me. I, I, I always marvel at, at Kissy, how long you've been in this program. And, and maybe you don't know the answer to this. I don't even know if Frank does. But is there any D3 women's coach that has the kind of seniority and staying power that you have that you're aware of? That's a Thomas question, huh, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> I know in the state of Maine, um, Mike McDevitt's been at St. Joe's for a long time. He ended up leaving for a little bit and he's back. So I've coached against him for a long time. Um, trying to think, you know, uh, on the women's side anyway. Just kudos to you for what you've accomplished mm -hmm. and sticking with it for, it just means a lot to all of us. Well, thank you. Husson's been a great fit for me, so. I was thinking actually the other day when I was driving in that I've been at Husson longer than I lived in my hometown growing up, you know, <laughs> and the day that comes when I don't have to go and park on the circle, that's going to be really, really weird for me. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I think it's good to point out, Eric, that it's, it's not just the year she's been there. I mean, the culture that Kissy has developed in that program, it's, it's a winning mm -hmm. culture. It's a culture of family, uh, about caring for her players. I mean, it goes over and above. You know, it is. The staying power is remarkable. Um, you know, just dealing with what you have to deal with as a coach, both on and off the court. But um, to do it and, you know, win multiple championships and have, uh, you know, daughters of players that played for you. I mean, what's more telling of a, of a great person, you know, not only a great coach, but a great person to have, you know, have the, the, the children of people that played for you come and, you know, you want you, you you want your kid to be coached by her. I mean, it's it's, it's been remarkable. So. Yeah, Bobby and Eric, you know what the secret is? A, a guy named Ed Gott, Lori Gott's father, coached with me for five years back in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Sue, so did was Ed Gott play, coaching then when you were there? I can't yes, remember. Yes, I, I okay. loved him. Yes, I and remember he him. Once, well. He told me a long time ago, if you surround yourself with good people, good things are going to happen. And uh -huh. I love it. I love it. I have such great people around me. I mean, you know, I don't want to sit on here and boast, 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 but our administration, I mean, John Bouget, who's on here, I mean, he, you know, he, he was buying our team jackets back in 93 when we would win the championship. You know, hats, hats also, hats. Hats too, right? <laughs> and so we've had the support, and Frank came into my office today and he's like, President Clark wants them playing you know and and he wants the kids in school and he's going to do everything in his power to help make that happen so it's been easy for me because of what we've had in place not easy but you know coaching hasn't been easy but it's made my life a lot easier yeah any any final questions or thoughts before dan one more thing uh, when when i was going to school there um uh del merrill was my coach and um I watched Johnny Sinclair and I watched some of the women playing that their names um, escape me right now. But it was um, to go back there a couple of weeks ago when I was up there in October to walk the campus again uh, with Nick and my wife. Uh, it was really um, a very important thing for me because the degree that I got in business administration helped me find a job that I worked for Milliken and Company for 35 years in their corporate finance and business planning and stuff and for my own consulting business after I left and now work at the Norman Rockwell Museum. But it, it is uh, to the young ladies there, you, you might get knocked down, 
but pick yourself up and compete all the time in everything that you do. And I still find myself competing um, in everything. And, and the competitiveness that you have within you will bring forward a wonderful life of, of remembrance here, playing outside of uh, when you graduate, and then who knows what you're going to be telling your families down the road. So I just want to say to you, just be hungry for knowledge and, and uh, shoot and uh, take a little jump shot from the corner of the post and swish it, baby, you know? <laughs> and, and, and thank you very much. It was great to meet everybody here. And maybe we'll see you up in campus in the springtime when you open up the new building. I'm coming up. And by the way, one of my roommates is still my friend today. And I work for his company a little bit out of Long Island. And we bonded like this. And after 50 years, we're going to come up in the springtime together. So you never know how long you stay with friends and teammates. That's great. Thank, thanks for it. And, and, and I think that's a great way to wrap it up right there. Unless anybody has any other questions, we're, we're right at the eight o'clock hour. And uh, I just want to thank everyone, you know, the Kissy and Frank for joining us as well as the players. Uh, love to see you guys. Hope to be seeing you on streaming soon. Uh, thanks to Nicole and, and Nick for, for hosting and, uh, it was an honor to moderate this, and I look forward to to doing it again. And maybe we'll make it a uh, you know a weekly or a monthly thing ongoing. Uh, I've enjoyed it tremendously, and it's a great way to to connect with the players and the coach uh, rather than just going to see them play. It's nice to get to learn a little bit a bit about each of these young ladies. So thank you for that, and everybody have a good night and stay safe. And we'll see y'all soon. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, guys. Thank Appreciate you, Bobby. It. You're welcome. Good night, Nick. I'll see you, Nick. See you later. Take care.